Um, so yeah, so CSS transitions, the, the, the kind of, there are new things in CSS3, and the idea is that when you're changing properties from CSS, from like or it's background color, foreground color, sizes, whatever you can change in CSS, the idea is that you, rather than just instantly change that property, when you visualize it, you can actually uh, do it over a period of time and animate that change so uh, it blends in. So, no transition there, just jumped. Um, and that's boring. We prefer motion sickness. So, uh, so in, in true FE sort of style, I've written my own slide framework here, which I regret halfway through. First transition there. So all, you, all you're doing is uh, you change the background color like you would normally in any way with the CSS. All I'm doing here is adding a new class which changes the background color. But because I've got this extra line here, the transition line is saying uh, the first property is saying that's the property that I want to transition. Uh, one one s means one second. That's the amount of time I want for the transition to take. And ease in is a timing function. Uh, if you use the jQuery properties a lot of these as well, there's easy in linear, ease out, easy in out, and they're just, they, they uh, affect the, the speed and the style that the effect happens. So, uh, yes, yeah, so that's what I've just said. Yeah, that's, uh, that's, it's as simple as that to do most transitions. Uh, I'll ask to see if I can stretch my talk out. To <laughs> So we can also use in the foreground just to show that it works with something pretty different. At the time it's a linear transition, made it last a bit longer, um, and it's a foreground colour. So that's changed that blue there, the green, blue. Uh, there's also another copy, oh, you, oh, you can also uh, do the same thing, split it up like you can with a lot of CSS, so you can have a transition property, duration and timing function separately, rather than do them in the shorthand single way. Uh, so that's exactly the same as that. Uh, the, one of the things you can do with transitions and the property you have in CSS is uh, delay. I'm not sure how useful. Is there use transition delay for anything useful? What, what, what? Give me an example of anything useful. Um, if you want to do it on something, on if you want to have something to happen a little while after the page load, so if you want a little button that you load on the page to wiggle, so you get people to push it after the page loads, um, but a really long time, like a, a minute, <laughs> and then they're on the page, the page is loaded, the hands are still be there, you give them a little prompt that says, oh, you've been sitting on our page. And then you move some around to the <laughs> <laughs> Pretty much. Actually, yeah, I have used it on page load as well, but for a different reason, more like a second after the page load, so it's like, you know, things are, everything's like looking right, and then I want, don't want it to be kind of get mixed into the loading with the other rendering thing. You mean like a timer? A bit like a timer. <laughs> yeah, that's why I kind of think, well, how, how often would you want to use that? Because normally if you're doing kind of more complicated chaining time and transitions, you're probably pretty JavaScript. So the transition uh, in CSS, you're probably more likely to do the timing through JavaScript. Uh, but anyway, you can do transition delay uh, there, and that means that the transition doesn't do anything until 10 seconds. And that's the same on page load, or, it's, or if you just added that class, you um, you can do multiple properties. So you know, again, we've got the background and foreground color change in here, and uh, have the same syntax. Uh, split them up. Comma separated list of properties. Comma separated list of durations, which maps that list of properties. And uh, yeah, the new background and foreground color. Probably one of the more, most common. Like to do is, a, is kind of phase swapping, that's one that you see a lot. Uh, that is just using an opacity change, um, but also using the Z index and having something direct and absolute positioning. So you've got something directly over the top of something else and changing the opacity of one. And that's uh, it's that simple to just transition any, any element of the DOM in that way. And just, that's just an example of how you can do lots of things together to make yourself 
feel quite sick. So that it was uh, changing the height and width. It was also changing the, the uh, background, the, the opacity was changing and the rotation was changing. Um, and this introduces transforms, which is, uh, when, I, when I started looking at transforms and transitions, because they both came in kind of about the same time, I got quite modeled up because they sound a bit similar. But, and I only use them together a lot. So, it's, uh, so, so the real distinction is transforms is just, it's, it's just something that statically transforms an element. The DOM, like, it's got rotation, scaling, uh, translation, so moving things around. And it would just literally move an element in that way. Um, if you combine it with transitions, then you get the animation from that first state to a transform state. So, uh, so, this, so this is saying my, my final condition of this, trans, uh, of this item is 100% width and height, like it fills the space, like you see, and uh, it's rotated through three to four circles. Presumably to swim to spin anti-clockwise, you put minus yes. 1080. Excellent, yeah, you can spin it either way, minus. Moving forward, does all Chrome still use WebKit as a prefix? Uh, oh yeah, that, yeah, actually, yeah, this is the first time we introduced this here, but, it, but yeah, you still, uh, you still do the uh, WebKit for transforms and transitions. Mm -hmm. so well, it's it's okay. now, uh, I think that's Safari from something else, or I'm yeah, sticking with WebKit at the moment, just for the sanity's sake. It's, it's Safari at this point. It's Chrome, it's Chrome, it's Blink. Presumably by the time that happens. Just wondering when they're the drop the thing. Apple. Uh, I think they've got backwards compatibility. I think Chrome are pushing to try and get rid of browser prefixes. Doesn't Safari yeah. yeah. support WebKit anyway? No? Yeah. So it's a bit of a It's all got. Yeah, um, the, they've dropped quite a lot of these. Yeah, I understand the old stuff, stuff just sort of moving, one moving forward. Yeah. Yeah. So I've started to get used to not, not putting the uh, browser prefix on quite a lot of things, like CSS3 stuff, and I was quite surprised. I got all the examples didn't have the prefix on, I know you still need them. This, uh, but I'm sure they'll be dropped pretty soon, generally when you... It all seems pretty solid and cross browser compatible everything. It's all pretty standard now, so I'm not quite sure why it hasn't moved. Um, right, if you, if you don't feel like vomiting yet, then let's bring 3D into the equation. Uh, so again, you've got, you, you can combine transforms and transitions to, to create 3D effects, and uh, with CSS3 you've got some 3D transforms, like the Rotate X, which will uh, transform, rotate in a three-dimensional world on the x-axis, assuming that you've got a perspective, which basically is distance away from an item you are, I think, is how it's defined, but it's a bit arbitrary, it's something that you kind of, you, you just mess about with it, basically, it shows how, how 3D it looks, really, how, how much it pops out like, in your face. So, uh, that's a flip effect by, you've got, you've got the uh, back and the front, rotating 380 degrees, the x-axis, and, uh, this slide shows the actual the, the transition definition. And it's that simple to do your basic 3D flip effects. So because it works so closely with trans transforms, I'll just show you a few transforms. Uh, all you need to do is de define a transition like that to say whatever transform it is do something with it, and then you can define your transforms like uh, translate, which basically moves anything through a space uh, relative, so that's 300 pixels, 300 pixels is, is, is moving plus that much in both direction. And same so here, scale is relative, so du that's doubling the size. Skewing doesn't seem to work very well in Chrome, which is do you have to set the centre on that? Or how it's scaled up? No. Or it just does it in the it, middle yeah, of the scale? Yeah, I mean, that's one reason why it's uh, better than like animating the height and width, I think. It's for Do you yeah, count the, the, the axis point? Yeah. Yeah, the, 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 
we've got more of an origin thing that you can move things, can't you? Same with the rotations. But, uh, but yeah, that's one reason it's better than this bit of time, because you don't have to worry about absolutely positioning in the top left and moving it at the same time. Uh, yes, skew, jumps, or all. Don't know why. Rotate. And then we've got the, uh, you can see that's kind of rotating there, angles, that's, that's because of the origin, called the origin, transform origin. So if you, if you change the transform origin, I can make it rotate around different points so that the perspective is And another thing that works quite well with transitions is filters, which is another CSS3 thing. Uh, so it builds all your transforms, you've got new content of filters, which is a, a way of filtering <laughs> DOM elements. You know, it's got things like blur, grayscale, uh, CPA, tones, and things like that. But I don't find blur particularly interesting with those. So, so yeah, so again, that just instantly would the filter would just instantly transform that DOM and anything within it into that blur. But uh, if it was, if you had, had the trans transition, three second transition, then you'd get a nice slow and uh, form it into using blur, turning into clear. So, yeah, so filters as well as transforms work nicely with transitions. So, why, what's the point in using these? We can do a lot of this stuff in J with jQuery already. It's the, the, probably the, the most widely regarded reason is because it's smooth, it's, it's uh, all the browsers have implemented GPU. Uh, you use the, the, the right graphics, the graphics guard to actually make these things happen, so it, it's fast. It's, it's not going to be jumpy, even if you've got, you know, most, most of the time if you do one of these in jQuery, you won't notice being jumpy, but if you have uh, 20 or 30 things bouncing around your screen, you'll soon start hearing your fan. Jerkiness. So with this, you can uh, there's some great demos that show like hundreds and hundreds of probably thousands of things animating just with DOM and CSS, and it's just having no no problem at all on the, on the standard machine. Uh, and yet, yeah, it's quite logical. It's just a logical idea of putting it in CSS. These were kind of meant to be. Uh, So you've got your styling stuff, you've, you've defined transforms and things in there, that's where you define the style and it makes sense and you define transitions between styles in there as well rather than mixing that into your JavaScript too much. And you get 3D and filters without having to actually draw things in yourself through something like Canvas or SVG. You, know, you saw how little code there was in creating some 3D effects. And some other tools. Uh, Transit JS is basically kind of a wrapper around a lot of the CSS transitions that kind of adds jQuery-like stuff, so you've got your classic kind of slide down, slide up, scale, and things where, where jQuery still doesn't use the doesn't default to CSS animation, transit does, so that's quite a, kind of nice thing if you, if, you, if you want to think in a more of a JavaScript way, don't want to define those in CSS, you can just say, you can use JavaScript to move things around, slide things around, do 3D rotations, uh, oh, CSS animation, yeah. Um, yeah, I haven't just, I'm not going to go here, yeah, CSS animation, but that's another thing that's often confused with transitions, and that's because, they, because you can use either for a lot of things. Um, but CSS animation is, is really about defining keyframes and how you get from one state to another, and it gives you a lot more, more control than transitions, so you can do more, do more kind of finite animations and transitions. Uh, but that's go for a different dog, something that knows something about it. Uh, and does it show you do talk about? Sure. <laughs> you don't do enough talks. <laughs> you start doing some talks. I'll do any tonight. Mm -hmm. uh, animate CSS. Who's used Animate? What's CSS? That's kind of a, a pre-packaged set of uh, 
easy to use effects like bounce, bouncing in and bouncing out and sliding in and out. And it's, it's kind of not very flexible. It's kind of not, it's, it's, it's packaged and it's nice and easy to use, but it's kind of it's only going to uh, do some of what you might want. Um, and then you can go really crazy. So if you combine these, if you combine the, uh, for instance, the rotation x and y, uh, the 3D rotation effect on faces, you can create cubes like this. So all these are our six different divs, and they're just being rotated to different states. And there's surprisingly little code in it. I'm not going to explain it now. Again, by combining the same method with 3D rotation, you can fold these up. And this is a JavaScript library that uses, uses this basically, folds things in different ways. You can manipulate it. And because it's just, it, it work, this stuff works only non element. So, yeah, pretty cool what you can do if you combine things together. And uh, that's about it. Any questions? It's only in time, it's a bit. Today, um, does it all kick off when the DOM is loaded, or when does it, as in, when does it start? Yeah, when the DOM is loaded, actually, I think so. Yeah. Yeah, as in the. When a transition starts, yeah. Yeah, so if. So, that example there is like. It's very good to don't load it, but it's not actually it's like. It's JavaScript to switch. But, but yeah, it is. Let's see, that's the. I'm sure it's the same don't load. If you tie it to a class, and then you have to. If you, with JavaScript, add that class to an element. At that point, it will trigger them. Sorry, yeah. yeah, that's what most of the examples I've shown, that's what I've done. So, it's, yeah, so kind of the obvious thing. The, all the examples you'll like, well, so many of them are like on hover or something, it's just an obvious CSS uh, sure. kind of action. And yeah, on load as well. But probably the most useful is in tied to a class. Is, so, it's when you actually have that class to an object that, that the effect will take place or after the delay period. Yeah, you can change things, so when it finishes, it can start something else. Um, I don't think you can do that directly in CSS, we'd have to do that. That's what I'm saying about, that's probably where you can use JavaScript or if you really want a lot of control over animating something and then do something else. Or if, you, if, you, if you were to do that in CSS, I think you'd have to do it by timing, it's like say, I know it's going to take three seconds, I'll have to delay this transition by three seconds and then do that and then delay this. Uh, there are animation complete events that you can listen to on Donovan's. So in JavaScript, you use add the class and add a, li add a listener for mm -hmm. animation complete, then add the class, then when it's completed, add your second class. Okay. That's good. Yeah, JavaScript for that. But that's all very JavaScript. -y. Yeah. Before you could just use <coughs> link, and then that would sort of pull you. <laughs> <laughs> that would, for that one hour market, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what about that? It's been about an hour, I'm so much more, you can make it so much worse. How much production work would you feel comfortable actually using these transitions on? I think I feel quite comfortable. I think they're pretty unique uh, to the cross browser compatibility. Yeah, and just it, how much of your UX is involved in the transitions and the animations and things? How, kind much? Of, how much of the UX of like, the actual experience of using Oh, the site? yeah. I think you have to be really limited as to how you'd use them, yeah, in terms of from, from a design point of view, as you can see from this. Uh, but some some instances where I've seen really cool, like.
like some really nice button demos out there that kind of give you this visual feedback on hover over and maybe the icon uh, like spins around or slightly expands and thought I think that could be like these little things like if you remove something from this then it animates yeah yeah so you can really see the other one can see something disappearing on and reordering yeah. it lifts where you actually see that where it's moving around it's, yeah I think yeah you just have to just really think about is there a user experience reason for doing this is it to really help with feedback on what's going on rather than just is it just I'm just using it because because it's just something fancy and new but yeah yeah um, have you had a look at doing any of this I know you've done some stuff with SVGs have you looked at doing CSS animations with or transitions of SVGs as well in terms of scaling and that kind of thing. No, you can use these actually within SVG. Yeah. Elements no. Yeah. No, no. I haven't really looked at SVG. Uh, apart from using Lion, I haven't really dug around inside SVG much. The murky one. Too many paths to draw. Too much XML. <laughs> <laughs>